Design AI have upgraded and unleashed some new AI features. They've improved their AI video and also added an image to 3D function as well as a few other things we're going to cover in this video. And at any point, if you want to try these out for yourself, there is a link in the description. The first thing we're going to touch on is image to 3D. And it works pretty simply. You simply grab an image that you can drag and drop to upload into the canvas. And once it's there, you can click on it. And just above in the toolbar is a 3D button that you can press. Now, once we press this, it asks us to remove the background. So we go ahead, remove the background, and then we can change a few things like the complexity of the mesh or the model itself. We can also increase the texture size if we want to upgrade that or choose the file type, which suits best for us. And when we're ready, we hit generate. We then give it a minute or two to actually generate this model from the image supplied. And once it's done, it'll appear over on the right. So you can click on it and you can view a little video preview of how the actual model looks. When you compare it to the image you uploaded, it did a great job of guessing a lot of the details at the back, and it does a pretty good job of recreating that model. I think it's just, it's a low resolution preview, but most of the important parts are there. And of course, when you're ready, you can click the download button to download your file. And again, you can download a .glb file or a .obj file or an FBX file. Now, I don't do a lot of 3D and haven't probably for a good 20 years or so, but I imagine this would be a real time saver, not only for creating models, but even for creating the base model for you to start on and refine after its creation. But being in Design AI opens us up to another option, which is to create our own image using the text to image generator, coming down, generating our image. And then once that comes through and appears on our canvas, we can go through that exact same process and actually generate images and convert them to 3D all within the one place. And overall, I think that the result is still pretty solid and I think this character turned out really quite well, having been created completely within design.ai. Now we're going to explore the AI video tools in design because they've received a big upgrade. So we've got this image I generated using Design AI's image to text feature. And if you look over to the left here, you'll see AI video. If I click on that, for one, we have image to video, but we also now have text to video. But what's really interesting is if you come down to video model, we have standard, Kling, Minimax, Luma, and Runway. So we have a whole bunch of different video uh, sort of like platforms we can choose to render this image. Now I can click here to pick an image, but I want to just generate from canvas. We're not gonna worry about end frame right now, but I come down here and type in a prompt. So I have this prompt here, which is the camera moving around a woman warrior staring forward with intent and focus, ready for battle, strong winds are blowing her hair, the sword reflects sunlight, cinematic. So these are the elements I wanna see within the picture. I have the image for guidance and also have an imagination range, which I'm gonna keep in the middle. Duration, I can go five or 10 seconds. We're gonna stick with five seconds and we're gonna test out a few of these different models as well as the imagination. Well, let's start with the standard and hit generate. Now, each of these looks pretty solid. Now, this is with the lowest amount of imagination and there's a little bit of movement. The movement enhances as you bring it up to about 0.5, although the sword kind of goes through an X, so there's a little bit of an AI glitch there. And number seven is a little bit more movement again, but they all look fantastic and have done a great job with what we've given them. But when it comes to the reflection and the hair blowing in the wind, I think the lowest imagination setting did the best job. But now let's try switching to some of these other models to see what results we get. With Luma, we get some good movement and the hair blows a bit, but the face starts to morph a little bit towards the end. Whereas with Runway, things are a lot more consistent. There's less movement, but it looks pretty sharp. Whereas Minimax, I think is the best so far between these last three. The way she turns is pretty impressive. But moving on to Kling, which I think is the best, it's my favorite. I've got the imagination at about halfway. So I dropped it down to three. We've got a little less movement, but everything is still crisp, very consistent. Bring that imagination up to seven, we get a lot more camera movement and still very, very impressive. But on top of that, Kling also had the highest resolution with most being 720p, Kling being 1080p. So at the time of recording, I think Kling's probably gonna be your best choice when it comes to creating videos. Now, if you wanna know how many points each video takes up, it actually doesn't use points. If you have the creator plan work like what I'm using, you get 20 five second videos a month, or if you're on the master plan, you can get up to 60 videos per month. So that's also handy to know. But why don't we test out text to video? So the way I'm gonna do this is actually head back and I'm going to copy this prompt and paste it into text to video. But I'm also gonna come down and get the prompt from the image and place it in front. So now we have both prompts in the prompt bar here. So it's a fair bit to handle, but let's see what it does with it. Starting off with standard, we'll try then Kling, Minimax Halo, and then Luma. 
keeping the imagination simply at balanced to see what results come from using the text to video to both generate the image and the video. Now this time all the videos are about 720p and this is clean and it looks absolutely amazing. Luma looks pretty solid, however, there's a bit of an issue with her eye, which is a little bit unsatisfying. Minimax Halo produces a very impressive video, especially zooming out the way that it does. And Standard does a good job this time too, with a bit more of an aged character this time around. All pretty solid. But moving on, Design have actually upgraded their face swap feature. So Design AI's uh, Face Swapper is, uh, has been upgraded and does a pretty good job. It sort of gives you a few ranges of options to choose from. So I generated this image using their image generator. If I come over left here to Face Kit, I can click on Face Swap and then I can upload a face picture. So I click Upload. I've got a few images I've used for thumbnails in the past. So I'll choose this one here. And see if we can get this guy who looks nothing like me to look a little bit more like me. The face has now been added. I click Generate. And you can see we get these results over here on the right. You notice there are varying degrees and sort of varying ways it tries to blend my face in. Some look a little bit too fake, some look pretty spot on, but you can basically choose which one you think is gonna work best in this particular instance. I really think it's done a great job of looking as natural as possible and is actually a lot better than some of the other face swapping features out there. So I think that's a pretty handy tool and you can see, super simple to use. But next we're gonna check out the AI image generator and the upgrades design have made there. So to get started checking out these upgrades, I'm gonna head over to text to image over here. And first of all, what I wanna to touch on is the fact that we have a few new models they're always adding. I think one of the last ones we saw was Flux last time I did an update on this, but we've got a few other newer models here to try also. So they're constantly adding in different styles and models into their system. But sticking with design general, I'm gonna add a prompt in here, something like, I have a samurai standing in front of Mount Fuji holding a sword. I'm gonna use my prompt improver just to kind of make it a little bit better. And what's really cool is they now have this color palette here. Now it usually sits on auto. So I'm gonna start off by generating an auto to see what we get. So when I hit generate, these are the images we get. And they're pretty decent. They look pretty good. There's definitely uh, nothing wrong with them. But what if we want to enhance the color a bit more? I come back over to color palette over here, click the drop down and I can choose any one of these or even add my own. So let's start off by seeing what we get with Barbie, Cyberpunk, Canyon, and Rustic. We click on Barbie, generate, and now you can see with the Barbie filter how it's definitely got that color range added to it. Definitely has adhered to that pretty well. We move up to Cyberpunk, and even the style has changed a little bit, but we get that really cool sort of Cyberpunk color scheme to it. Move on to Canyon. Again, something really cool. I really like the way this turned out, but also rustic. You can see how it's got those same colors there on the grid actually inserted onto the image. What happens if we want to define our own colors? Before you go ahead, you may notice one thing. I've got my results down the center here. One of the updates that's been made with Design AI is it's known for its canvas, which is what we have here, where we can add images in and edit. But if I click on this button here, we can just simply scroll through and see our results. So we have two different types of workflows we can use, which is another reason why I really love this tool. But coming back over to the color palette, drop down, go to custom, I can start to add colors. Let's stick with red as one color, add in another, and we're gonna go primarily grayscale. It can sort of click on and off a little bit. And we can also click on certain colors and then alter them. So I've got a real high contrast sort of neutral with red here. So I've got my custom color scheme. So while that is selected, I'm gonna hit generate. And notice this time how we've got a lot of red with a lot of sort of blacks and very dark colors in this one. And the other one, it's a little bit more neutral with some red attached to the kimono and some of the clothes he's wearing. Coming back. This color palette tool is really handy, but it's not just confined to design general. If I come down to some of the older ones, it's actually still there. So this is something that's been added on top of their image generator. It even works when you switch to Flux. So it's a consistent feature that you can now use with all your image generations, which is really, really handy. But what about some of the newer models? How do these models stack up when we compare them now that they've been released? Let's generate a few images and see what results we get. Now starting with Flux, I think this has got a really nice uh, artistic interpretation, but Flux is also known for its photorealism, which in this image I think has done a pretty good job and has an almost cinematic feel to it. 
which moves me on to Design Cinematic, which actually makes things a little more cinematic and really does have a photorealistic look to it. Even the way that the background's kind of blurred in this image, really nice model for that photorealism and cinematic look. Design Anime did a great job also. You can see it does have a bit of an anime style to it with this image. And we move on to the second image, another sort of very similar one. Nice anime style, but the problem is we don't really get to see the face. So I also submitted the face of a samurai and you can see how it's really kind of got that anime aesthetic when it comes to rendering the face in these images. So just thought I'd throw that one in there extra so you can see how well it performs. Painterly Punk, I really love the, the way that it has a bit of a glowing light and that pink feel to it. This creates really nice aesthetic images. And uh, as you can see here, there's just a nice sort of punky glow to the whole thing. And Plush Toy, I think pretty much speaks for itself. Definitely a solid uh, model for getting that plush toy look. Again, playful outline, really great for the whole idea of doing coloring books or just really simple black and white outline style drawings and glossy pop again speaking for itself that glossy pop style looks like something you could jump into like a jumpy castle i really like it uh really good for uh creating something different and cozy 3d has that nice cartoony look but also has that nice kind of glow to it in these images so that's a nice fun one too it almost has a pixar like quality whereas playful critters uh doesn't hasn't really included critters in this but you can see that style it's really got that nice style to it very similar to the icon of playful critters so it'll be interesting to see how well it handles animals in that instance so i updated the prompt to samurai monkey and now we can see we've got some cool little samurai monkeys with swords standing in front of mount fuji so really cool really fun model to play with so design 3d render does another really good job of creating nice cartoony sort of looking 3d characters and layouts although this one looks a little more a little 2d ish as well Whereas Design Realistic has some realistic elements in the first image, but the second image looks far more realistic than the first. Definitely worth experimenting with. I would recommend even prompting for photorealism when using some of these uh, realistic models. In Design General, again, a nice new updated general model, which also does a great job with imagery. And I love the way it sort of centered things here with this image. So those are a lot of updates to cover and you can see just how this platform design AI is constantly growing, adding new features. The fact that you can do almost anything visual from generating art to creating videos, to face swapping, editing with AI, even doing full designs with their canvas and their editor tools. This really makes it a very complete platform, especially for people doing visual images, really great for social media uh, sort of marketing and that kind of thing. So. Definitely, if you haven't had a chance, check out Design AI. I'll pop a link in the description. I think they're doing a really awesome job of constantly moving ahead and there's a, some fierce competition when it comes to AI art generators these days. So that's the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.